There's a scene in The Minority Report, which is a movie that I love with Tom Cruise, where he walks into what I think is a future Gap store. And the store welcomes him back and asks him whether he'd like another pair of the same pants that he purchased in the same size. And what's happened to create that little magic in the movie is there's a sensor somewhere on Tom that enables the store to know that he's back. We're actually closer to that convergence moment than I think many of us realize. There are sensors now in almost every device that we deploy in our home, in our car, and in our work. Let's take a step back. When we talk about the internet, we usually mean things like computers. In fact, the first internet was, in fact, a set of connected devices across the world that communicated over secured lines. Now everything is wireless, sensors are cheap, it's easy to deploy and install local networks that connect to your home networks and then on to the internet. We should consider what some of the things that this actually means for our lives. It's obviously very convenient. It's nice that my smartphone knows where I am. It's nice that my car alarm can be activated or deactivated from distance. It's nice that I can access a video feed of my home to figure out if anybody's there that shouldn't be there or if my kids have arrived safely. But there are a couple of other things that happen as this internet of things, as people call it, starts to develop around us. All of that information about our life starts to become aggregated into these databases that are intensely valuable to advertisers, to insurers, to people who would just like to know more about what we do and how we act. Think about this very simple example. Imagine in a world not too far away from where we are today that every bottle of milk that you buy also has a sensor on it and that that sensor detects whether the milk is still good and then alerts us through a local network. Sounds good, right? Sounds convenient. Nobody likes spoiled milk. But imagine also that the milk producer then know, understands exactly how often your milk is consumed and what you like to use your milk for. Are you eating sugary cereals with your milk? Are you pouring milk in too much coffee? Are you having too much coffee each day? These are very knowable things. And as we develop the Internet of Things around us, that information can be used to make judgments about us. In those two examples I gave you, maybe a health insurer would say, well, he's eating a little too much sugar cereal. We think there's a risk here for diabetes or obesity. We're going to up his health insurance rates. Now, there's some law that protects us from this, but there are a set of ethical considerations. As we think about how that data is used, what is the trade-off between the convenience of an all-knowing internet of things and our own personal privacy in our home, in our car, and at work?